Good morning, my name is Alexandra Lansky from Yale University. It's my pleasure to be here this morning with Dr. Richard Sutton from Imperial College in London and Dr. Brignoli from Lavagna, Italy. So we're going to be discussing your trial that you're going to be presenting to, um, uh, during the session at ACC, pacemaker therapy in patients with neurally mediated syncope and documented asystole. So let me ask you, Dr. Sutton, to give us a little bit of background on, on the study. Thank you. This has been a vexed question for many years. We started really in the 80s recognizing syncope and seeing that uh, there was asystole in some patients and we naturally thought a pacemaker would be good for this. We embarked on trials, one in North America, one in Europe, uh, looking at exactly this problem. There were differences in the trials. Both looked rather good in their results, but both compared pacemaker implantation with basically no therapy. And a third trial in Italy uh, would compared pacemaker with a beta blocker they were fashionable at the time and also looked very good. Criticism was that uh, we had not put a pacemaker in all the patients so there could be a placebo effect and so two more trials were raised, one in North America, one in Europe and neither showed a significant difference in favour of pacing. They were again somewhat different and uh, Michele and I and others believed that there was still help for some patients with newly mediated syncope and asystole. So uh, we began the issue to registry where we implanted a loop recorder in patients who we thought uh, was, were having reflex syncope, documented the spontaneous event that occurred and being a registry we couldn't do more than offer the caring physician. Uh, either to implant a pacemaker or not. Interestingly, divided e almost equally, and the results of the paced patients look very much better than those who are unpaced, prompting uh, the issue three trial, which we are reporting now. So can you give me, um, uh, Dr. Uh, Brignoli, can you give me just a des the design of the trial and then maybe highlight for me some of the results that you found? Yes, the patient who had the documentation of recurrent syncope with uh, a, a, an asystole longer than three seconds or a non-syncopal asystole longer than six seconds were eligible for the issue three uh, study and were randomized to pacemaker on versus pacemaker off and followed for uh, up to two years. And the results were that the pacemaker was superior to placebo in preventing the syncopal recurrence. And in particular, after two years, the syncopal recurrence rate in the pacemaker active arm were 25% versus 57% in the placebo arm. This means a 32% absolute reduction in syncopal recurrence, 57% relative reduction. In other words, a number needed to treat of three. It's fantastic, very impressive results. I guess one of the questions is, you're preventing syncope as opposed to harder events. So how, what do you think the implications of your findings are in terms of treating patients going forward and, and recommendations? Reflex uh, or neuromediate syncope is a benign disease as regards mortality, so we cannot expect to, to reduce mortality in this patient. But uh, this kind of, the issue three population was a, a particular uh, a subset uh, specific set of the neuromediated single population at a risk of trauma because these patients are old, the average age of the study was more than 60, and uh, uh, are, have uh, unpredictable syncope, this means uh, no problems. And uh, the syncope without problem exposes the patient to risk. So uh, what we expect is that we not, not only we reduce uh, uh, syncope recurrent rate, but uh, reduce the comorbid comorbidities related mm -hmm. to, to syncope. So we're going to see uh, guidelines, recommendation changes on the basis of this? Do we need to repeat uh, a larger scale trial? Where do you think this is going? Uh, I think that guidelines will change and they'll move uh, pacing for 
particular patients forward and upward. So highlight for me once again which patients really should be selected for pacemaker therapy. The issue population is very a typical population. We have estimated that there is uh, no more than 9% of the newly mediated single population referred to a specialist clinic. So it's a minority. And this, this population is characterized by much higher age than usual uh, population with reference syncope. Uh, is, see, the average age was 63 years. They have a high frequency of high risk syncope. High frequency means high number of recurrence that alter the quality of life of the patient and my risk is the impredictability, the absence of warning that exposes patients to risk of trauma or at least of their occupation, for example, during driving. Uh, uh, we think that uh, um, if uh, issue, issue 3 shows that the PESMEC is effective uh, uh, therapy for syncope. But the fact that PESMEC is effective does not mean that we, we have to use this PESMEC in all the general population of patients with syncope. For example, the vast majority of patients with newly mediated syncope are young, and the uh, uh, reference syncope of young is uh, almost always preceded by warning, so there is no need to implant the PESMEC, and other therapies, much simpler, uh, are. Uh, uh, um, to be preferred to patient therapy. Okay, well I want to thank you both. This is a really phenomenal uh, study and findings, and I think it does have uh, very significant implications for the treatment of our patients. So thank you both uh, for this interview. Uh, that concludes our interview. Thank you. Thank you.